Hello everybody and welcome to the Real Tarot. I hope all of you are doing very well. Um, to my subscribers, I want to start off. Well, I always do. <laughs> Thank you so much for your support. I do appreciate you all. You all know that. And to those of you who are visiting for the first time, thank you for stopping by. Um, I hope you do uh, choose to uh, become a member of the Real Family. I truly hope you subscribe. Um, I do post videos on a regular, so don't forget to hit that bell icon so you will be notified. I do have live streams, etc. So you'll get all that information. So please subscribe. <clears throat> Excuse me. And this video is going to be for my series, which is Thriller Thursdays, correct? So as I, as you all know, I do series like every day of the week. I have a, a excuse me a video mystery mondays tricky tuesdays wicked wednesdays thriller thursdays fright night fridays uh serial killer saturdays and silver screen sundays so uh it's a lot of fun um you know some of the cases are scary as heck so i can't really say that's fun but fun as in uh, a lot of information exchanging of ideas comments etc so anywho let's get started this is for my thriller Thursday uh, series and the case I'm working on right now this video is for Terry Lee King he is the father who was killed by his two kids so Terry was born on April 17 1961 he died on November 8 2001 uh, his one son is Alex King he was born in uh, on July 12th 1989 Derek King the the older one was born on May 4th, 1988. So, um, you know, the allegation is that both the boys uh, killed the father. And so, of course, you know, they were minors when this went down and all that stuff. There's also another angle to this. There's some fella called Ricky Chavez. I don't know who he is. I think they tried to pin him or he was somehow involved with, I don't know, Alex or Derek, one of them. Apparently, one of them claims that Ricky Chavez molested them or something. I don't know. It's like a rabbit hole. So I'm not even going to go down that rabbit hole because it's like neither here nor there. Uh, it's it's very, very interesting. When I was doing, you know, my usual stuff that I do, um, all of them had the fifth house that was uh, quite prominent, okay? And fifth house talks about speculation, kids, you know, uh, that sort of a stuff. Uh, and if you look at tarot, the five stands for whether you do the cups, the pentacles, the swords, or the wands. Five is a very kind of a tumultuous uh, type of energy, regardless of what suits you choose, suit you choose. And then they also have very prominent 11th house. Now, the 11th house talks about, you know, like-minded people, groups, and friends. Um, so we are going to look into this and see what, what's going on. Um, it's very, very interesting. And Ricky Chavez, he's another thing altogether. I don't have Ricky Chavez's date of birth, so I didn't do that. I just went off of his name. Uh, so, six thousand. So let's see, Aries, one, two, three, four, five, six, Virgo and Libra. Okay, let's see what we have energies for Terry Lee King, okay? Terry Lee King. We have Uranus, Pluto, no no surprise there. He died in the Scorpio season. We have Capricorn, Venus, and we have Sagittarius. Okay, very interesting because Uranus rules Aquarius, right? And if he's an Aries, his 11th house is Aquarius. If Terry Lee is an Aries, which he is, he was born on April 17th, he's an Aquarius. Uh, and uh, Uranus, along with Saturn, rule Aquarius. And then he's also got Capricorn here. Capricorn would be his 10th house. And 10th house is also ruled by Saturn. So a heavy Saturn. These are strong energies. And look, he's got Pluto. Pluto is Scorpionic energy. Pluto rules Scorpio along with Mars. And uh, Pluto talks about death and regeneration as well, right? So I, should I say I'm surprised? I'm not. I'm honestly not surprised at all. Because with such heavy energy, it is no surprise that he passed when he passed. And it would not have been, in my humble opinion, it would not have been a uh, natural death. Now, again, let me throw out the disclaimer. This is for entertainment purposes only. 
these are my observations and my opinions. Do your own due diligence, do your own research, form your own conclusions, and draw your own opinions, okay? So we do have Venus here, and Venus, of course, rules um, Libra. Now, he is one, two, three, four, five, six. So who had the six here? Ricky Chavez had the six. So for him, yeah, so I can see how Libra... I, okay, so I'm going to say... I completely agree Ricky Chavez had some part in this, in Terry Lee's death, some part, okay? Was he principal, uh, you know, the principal perpetrator or whatever you call criminal, whatever the right word is, I don't know, but he definitely had a part, definitely had a part. Then we have Sagittarius, and Sagittarius, as we know, is ruled by Jupiter. So let's take a look and see who has, uh, so he's an Aries, two, four, one, two, three, four, five. Eight, nine, no, and he is, you know, wait, actually, Alex is Cancer. So Alex is Cancer, and his 10,000th is Aries, okay, and Derek is Aries, and so is Terry Lee, first house. I don't know whether I want to go so far as to say between Alex and Derek, I do want to say Derek, there's something more. There's a deeper connection between Derek and Terry, I want to say. There is a deeper connection between Derek and Terry. And having said that, his fifth house, right? He's an Aries, one, two, three, four, five. There is a deeper connection between Derek and uh, uh, Terry more than Alex, I feel. And I also feel between the two of them, Derek was more of the leader. So I don't know how the case turned out. I don't know which one of the boys, whether it was an equal sentencing or there was more to one than the other. But with Sagittarius thrown in, uh, Sagittarius is... Uh, um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Ninth house for Terry, right? And ninth house aspects talks about, of course, the intellect and, you know, all that sort of a thing, you know, how we process things. The, the you know, uh, Sagittarius being ruled by Jupiter is about the philosophy and this, that, and the other. I wouldn't be surprised if, if Terry Lee actually, like, he might have gone through phases in his life where he always wondered how his kids were going to turn out. Like, you know, every parent has that, right? I hope I'm doing right by my kids. I hope I'm teaching them good values. I hope I'm raising them right. I hope I'm doing enough. I'm going to say for him, that expansion, like his kids with Jupiter over there, his kids were his world. His kids were his world. So then, ah, I should do this. Hang on. Before I do any of that, now let me pull the majors for each of the boys. Let's do this. Let's do this. Let's see what the energy is for each of the boys. So I will do for Alex. Okay. Mars. Okay. Well, he is an Aries. So Mars, he's showing up in his own thing. So for him, the first stars, first stars talks about himself, all about himself. <coughs> Right, so Alex, it's clear, first house. So it's all about himself. So there's more that, look at me, look at me. The, almost being the baby, well, Aries is the baby of the Zodiac. It's demanding, being all about me, uh, you know, having kind of a sense of uh, entitlement. Like, it should be all about me. This is all about me. My life is all about me. You have to, I, there was, I'm going to go so far as to say there was even a little bit of... Um, uh, jealousy almost of Derek, you know, but having said that, it's, it's, oh, hang on, and for Derek, we have Saturn, so Derek being <clears throat> an Aries, Saturn, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, ten, eleven thousand, so the tenth house, no, he's uh, Aries, yeah, Tenth house is Capricorn for him, and Capricorn is ruled by Saturn. I would say Derek was more of the deeper, the more, um, whatchamacallit, the kind of person who uh, 
uh, I would say between the two of them, Derek would be the quieter one. I'm going to go so far as to say Derek is a quieter, more um, introverted of the two, if at all either one of them is introverted. Derek is more of the introvert. Then let's look at Ricky Chavez. Okay, it's very interesting. Oh my God, the number of players. Pluto. Huh. Death and Regeneration. This is not a very good card for Ricky Chavez because based on six, right? And then you have 10, so. Ten. See, with Pluto here for Derek Chavez, he has clearly, clearly had a hand in this whole event. Uh, uh, demise or the murder of Richard Lee. I, I'm going to go so far as to say Derek Chavez certainly hand, had a bigger hand, directly or indirectly, uh, in the murder and the demise of uh, Terry Lee. He definitely had a bigger hand. Whether they were able to prove it or not, I don't know. And it really doesn't, uh, you know, where's the other deck? Hang on, everybody. let's get a read because already 11 minutes into this I need a read for it so he died too too young what is he 40 years when he died Terry did he die in his home I don't know where he was found dead y'all I, I did not look it up because I just I decide to do a reading and I just go for it. I had meant to do this last year, um, last year, last week, but for some reason I was like, eh, I put it away and I didn't do anything about it. And finally, uh, I was like, today I had a scratch paper, like I did Virginia rap and, you know, all those other people. So I had written it down there and then finally I picked it up. I said, let me do it now. So let's go into this reading. Enough of talking. Oh, two cards. Eight of Cups, walking away. Queen of Swords. The Fool card in the reverse. Strength card in the reverse. Very interesting. Very, very interesting. Four of Pentacles, holding on. Insecurity. Ten of Cups, holding on to... Seven of Cups in the reverse. Seven of Wands in the reverse. Oh my God, this is terrible. Two of Cups, the two kids. Three of Cups. Okay. <laughs> Y'all, I, I kid you not. Okay, I'm going to stick to the same old, same old that I said a few minutes ago. De uh, Derek Chavez, oh, I'm sorry, not Derek Chavez, Ricky Chavez certainly had a hand in this. Certainly he had a hand in this. So we have the Eight of Cups. Eight of Cups does talk about walking away from a situation, right? It does talk about moving, abandonment. And then we have, I'm going to explain the traditional tarot meanings. Queen of Swords does talk about somebody who is um, uh, self-sufficient, uh, total honesty, clarity of mind. And the Fool card in the reverse says, okay, there is no more venturing off into the unknown and taking, you know, uh, a gander and going on an adventure. None of that. Strength card in the reverse absolutely says there was no more clarity of that, did not have the ability to think clearly or think with your head. This was like almost like an emotional thing. And the Strength card also shows that he was in a weakened state of emotions. Then you have Four of Pentacles hanging on. Four of Pentacles does talk about, you know, uh, greed or desire from long-term security, but it also talks about um, insecurity, like right, having a lot of insecurity, holding on, holding on to emotions, holding on to whatever. Then you have the Ten of Cups upright, the Seven of Cups in the reverse. The Seven of Cups in the reverse, you know, as we know, the Seven of Cups means you have multiple choices. It's also a gaslighting card, but in the reverse, it says that there were no more choices. You didn't have choices. Seven of Wands in the reverse. Seven of Wands talks about, in the upright, talks about self-defense, protection against, against competition. Right under the Fool card in the reverse, unable to protect himself. Absolutely unable to protect himself. 
look at this so this tells me that uh, uh, I mean it was like this actually reversed this tells me that the two kids absolutely absolutely were his everything okay Terry's everything Derek and Alec was everything to Terry great dad but it's like you know what I can't say no to my kids I can't say no to my kids you know that sort of an energy because it's like I mean they're my world but it's the kids who actually destabilized him the kids who took away his strength and then you have the three of cups I am telling you y'all that Ricky Chavez has something to do with this it's not just these two kids it's the Ricky Chavez also who has something to do with this so as far as Terry was concerned, he was holding on. He he's yeah insecure. You know, as much as the kids were his world, he you also knew that they were the soft soft spot, right? So you know, uh, you know how they say you're only as strong as your weakest link, and his weak spot was his kids, and he was holding on to that. He absolutely was holding on to that because for him, his kids was everything. Okay, the security, wanting to provide that security, wanting to provide that happiness that joy have everything provide for his kids he was all about it but also insecure because insecure as in how insecure as in like oh my god what if anything happens to my kids you know that insecurity i do believe the fact that he was insecure about these three i have a feeling terry kind of sort of knew about ricky chavez his shenanigans with the boys or one of the boys i think terry kind of knew and it made him very insecure but he was like how do i go about resolving this i feel like he was derailed he didn't know how to resolve that situation oh my god to think to think that uh you know and also i want to know if anybody can post was um terry king just returned from a, a travel or a trip or, or whatever or was he planning on going somewhere because that's coming up over here Give me one second. Let me mute this phone because, uh oh. Oh my God. Give me one second. Yeah, my pharmacy, they won't stop. I, I, as many times as, I, as I've said, please stop sending me text messages. I know when I need to pick up my medication. I will go pick it up. Stop harassing me with your dang text. I've disengaged, I've opted out, but I don't know why I still get those texts and it's very annoying. But anywho. Alex King, actually, let me do Ricky. Ricky Chavez. Eight of Cups. Ten of Cups, this is for Ricky Chavez. The fool card. Look, I shuffled and in spite of that, these cards are popping up in the same order. One more card for Ricky Chavez. The hermit. Oh my God. Okay. So let's see. So Ricky Chavez, we have the eight of cups, right? Abandoning and moving away from his relationship with the two kids. See, I don't know if there was a female involved. I feel like Ricky Chavez was walking away from something and also moving away and wanting to move away from these two kids there's a weird kind of a connection between him and the two kids now whether ricky chavez was a child molester which is what the talk is about i don't know the details of that but the fool card no more adventuring so this card clearly tells me that hey your happy days you know when you were able to go and partake of you know happy days when you were able to go and partake of all these indulgences and and do whatever you wanted and kind of you know have all those uh you know ability to have all that with all within the reverse it's like your freedom is, to do all of this is completely curtailed gone and then the hermit card shop shows up and of course the hermit card talks about well going inwards looking inwards searching it also talks about um in a way mental and emotional restriction like you're going inwards like introversion but as far as this is concerned i'm going to tell you ricky chavez went looking for something on that property he went he went there for something he this is confirmation he actually went to that property wherever terry lived for something 
on or thereabouts where Terry died. For something he went, I don't know whether Terry died on the property or somewhere else, but Ricky Chavez clearly was on those premises. He was. I should have got a glass of water, but anyhow. Um, now let's see Alex King. Now I'm going to shuffle Alex King. You know, all this thing about, you know, the kids were innocent and they didn't do it and Ricky is the, uh, is the one who did it and they blamed the kids. Uh, what I, I believe he had a strong influence on the kids. He had a part in this, 100%. Whether he was finally framed or not or included in the, in the uh, case, I don't know. Uh, but he was involved in a way, shape or... See the lover's card in the reverse. And this is for Alex King. The emperor in the reverse. The hierophant. The magician. And the six of cups. So as far as Alex King is concerned with the lover's card in the reverse, as we know, the lover's card is a Gemini card. And lover's card talks about um, you know, love and friendship and partnership, etc. There is a loss of that love and friendship and partnership with the emperor here. And the emperor, as we know, is an Aries card, which is his dad, right? So he really does have, it's for some, at some point in time, he completely lost it. He, he lost whatever affections or whatever he had for his dad. It was almost like the father doesn't exist for him anymore, right? And then you have the Hierophant. As we know, the Hierophant talks about uh, it's Taurus, mercy, compassion, need for approval, etc. But this Hierophant, uh, I'm going to say is, is Derek because of where we have the six over there. Hang on one second. We have Aries, one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah. Um, and then we have the Magician card. So he, uh, what's his name? Alex King looked to uh, Ricky Chavez, I keep getting con confusing, Derek Chavez, no, Ricky Chavez, Alex King looked to Ricky Chavez as being somebody who had the ability to set boundaries for him, but I, because I feel somewhere along, along the line, Alex stopped looking at his father as a role model as dad, and he started looking towards uh, Ricky Chavez as being somebody who had the ability to... Um, uh, to set guidelines, almost looking for approval. So he, so whenever Alex King wanted to uh, get approval or whatever, it all it was almost like he was looking to Ricky Chavez for approval for, to appease him. It's almost like dad, dad, like hero worship, worshiping this this criminal, and he he looked at Ricky Chavez as being somebody who had the power and the ability to create magic to do whatever he you know, uh, he could to make uh, Alex's relationship and opinion of Ricky Chavez is weird. He lost, he had, it was turned off. So it's almost like Ricky uh, Chavez replaced his dad. And we have the Six of Cups. And as we know, the Six of Cups talks about nostalgia, gifts and love and reunions. So for him, I think at a brief period of time, he might have he might have moved away a little bit from uh, his relationship with Ricky uh, Chavez, might have been disintegrated or cut a, a briefly, like separated. But he And so he wished he could go back to being then because I think the relationship also kind of evolved and changed. So I wouldn't be surprised if that... <sighs> Do I want to say that? When he started looking at Ricky Chavez as being his provider, his somebody who would he had to appease, who uh, he had to always ask for approval. Ricky Chavez was the one who could create anything for him, make anything happen, made him happy, made him feel special. For a brief second, that relationship also kind of blipped. And then I see Alex wishing he could go back and recapture that, which is odd. And then he has a judgment card. 
So this is saying the judgment card, as we know, is Pluto, forgive and forget. So I wonder if Ricky Chavez played mind games with Alex and said, you know what, you're not behaving. I'm going to cut ties with you. And Alex went, no, 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 I'm going to behave. I'm going to be good. I promise I'll be good. And then uh, Ricky Chavez said, okay, fine. Okay, fine. Right. I've, you've learned your lesson. I've taught you your lesson. And I forgive you and forget. Uh, for, we'll forget that and let's get back on track. It's it's like a weird relationship there. Oh, my God. So now let's look at Derek King. Ricky Chavez had a bigger hand to play in this, y'all. I'm, I'm, I'm not kidding, y'all. So now we have, for, for Derek King, we have Eight of Pentacles, okay? It's almost like his current energy. This, for Derek, I'm feeling it's a current energy. Then we have the Emperor in the reverse. We have this Magician pop up again. Page of Pentacles. The Fool card. This Fool card has popped up in the reverse so many times, almost for, e for each and every one of them. So with the Eight of Pentacles, I do believe for Derek Chavez, he was the one who was, uh, you know, uh, no, I'm being told this is his current er energy. Not the energy when, when he was young, when, when all that murder happened. This is, for some reason, Derek King's current energy is popping up. So Eight of Pentacles is showing me that he is focusing on whatever his career or path of life is, whatever career is and whatever his, his, his endeavor is or whatever he's do, working on right now. But with the Emperor card in the reverse, I'm going to say he actually does, does feel the loss of his dad. He does feel the loss of his dad. And then he has a magician card, you know, as much, oh God, this is twisted, y'all. This is seriously freaking twisted. This is his current energy. Derek King is working on whatever, I don't know how old he is. Wait, hold on a second. He was born in 88, so that makes him 89. So he's 30 something years old now, right? He was born on May 4th, 1988. Yeah, he's, he's what, uh, 34, 35. So he must, I don't know if he's out of prison, but if he is, he's working. There is still that missing of the father, understanding the great lack of a father figure in his life. Because I remember in the beginning, I felt he, he, his attachment to Terry was something a little bit more than Alex's with Terry. But then with the Magician card, I do believe Derek does still think about that fool, the Ricky Chavez. I don't know why he's still thinking about Ricky Chavez. It's almost like as much as he misses his father and he sees the, the effects of the lack of having a father, the implications of that on his life, uh, his biological dad, there's still some weird connection with that stupid um, Ricky Chavez. What's going on, Derek? Like, why? And then he has a page of pentacles. And the page of pentacles talks about being patient, working, trying to raise money, you know, uh, uh, trying to um, uh, have some new enterprise, working on something new so that he'll have something to offer. And the fool card, the fool card again, right, in the reverse talks about no more adventures, no more happy times, no more running off into the wild. It's like there is a purpose for his, oh my goodness, I'm going to say this. I will not be surprised if Derek King, right, still is in touch some way, shape or form with Ricky Chavez. And I will not be surprised if he is working towards something either to help or assist Ricky Chavez. 
that's what my cards are showing me this is very weird because see this is his current energy so why is he still is he working towards ricky chavez to help ricky chavez or is he working towards ricky chavez because he's realized the damage ricky chavez caused on his family and he's now wanting to go after him i don't know i don't know but there's still some work but he's still looking at him in a kind of sort of part oh my god okay hang on i i i need clarity on this this is crazy very confusing it's like vacillating back and forth back and forth i understand what ricky did is bad but then again almost i wouldn't call it stockholm syndrome but kind of sort of and then he has a justice look he's going to go after him y'all some way shape or form he's going to go after him either to bring justice to uh, ricky chavez and get him uh, to make everybody look like he's innocent or bring justice to ricky chavez because ricky chavez what you did to me and my family was was wrong and so therefore i'm going to take care of you that sort of an energy looking 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 inwards looking inwards wanting to find more uh, more introspection trying to understand this is a deep kid this is like somebody who thinks deeply uh, and the star card the aquarius card remember i saw aquarius somewhere else aquarius is um terry lee's 11th house and aquarius is also derrick king's 11th house and the 11th house talks about like-minded people groups and friends um i'm also going to say that uh, derrick king you know if he had the support of a group of people or whatever they are withdrawing they're like nobody we are not going to help you on on this particular endeavor of yours right but he oh my god eight of wands speedy action there's some quick quick action he's going to take i'm a bit concerned actually i'm a bit concerned because i'm like what is this fellow going to do now i mean he's a grown man he's 34 35 years i can't say kid but nine of wands nine of wands says keeping uh, and maintaining boundaries and being persistent he's not maintaining his boundaries anymore he's like no all bets are off i'm actually a bit concerned over here so i don't know what the deal is holding on very closely to plans holding on very closely to emotions finances whatever resources seven of swords in the reverse doesn't give a flip about self protection doesn't care doesn't care he's like i i don't derek's energy is different y'all i'll tell you derek's energy is different and then you have the king of wands right a bold leader the power the charm the courage ability to take action he's going to diffuse somebody here he's going to diffuse somebody here absolutely nine of cups wish is coming to a band he is definitely going to be diffusing somebody doing something that is going to take away that wish fulfillment take away the good times take away the opportunity to live breathe whatever taking away the power from somebody be it physical mental emotional or spiritual power from somebody two of wands in the reverse right there is no more making a choice i need to make a choice the decision has been made six of swords in the reverse there is no more transitioning nothing so it's almost like he is in a state of the taurine energy being very stubborn and being very like i've made my decision this is it this is it one more card for him one more card derek's energy is a bit scary the lovers card this of course is a gemini card no more friends no more partnership no more duality no more nothing i feel like derek's energy is such that it's almost saying look this is it this is it like i don't i don't care i i have an agenda i have i've done some major soul searching i have an agenda okay i've got to go on my path i don't care if there is no support i don't care if nobody wants to help me it's going to be quick i'm going to do it quick this is a bit scary okay i'm going to stop with this that's a bit scary this is a bit scary derek's energy is a bit um, i'm not so much liking that Terry show me something about Terry give me some cards for Terry what does he want us to know
Sorry, y'all. These cards insisted on coming out, so I'm going to end this one guy too. I'm going to take it. So I'm going to keep this. This is the last card. As you can see, it's the lover's card. So I'm going to put it under, okay? So the first card on top was Seven of Cups, Ace of Wands, Two of Pentacles, and the lover's card. So the Seven of Cups is a gaslighting card, as we know. We know that. We know that for a fact. But with the Seven of Cups here, it does talk, uh, talk about too many choices, commitment issues, okay? And the Ace of Wands in the reverse. The Ace of Wands, as we know, it's about the urge to create, the urge to wanting to do something new, having the power to be able to new, do something new, but it's in the reverse. So there is no urge to create anything. That power is taken away. Absolutely, it's taken away. Um, you know, the, the ability to to make a choice, to have multiple choices, right? Uh, it's, it's completely gone. You, you don't want to make a decision. You don't want to make a commitment. That's fine. But uh, now I don't have the power to make a decision or make a commitment. That's out of my hands. But then with the two of pentacles in the upright, it, it does say um, there is still... See, here's the funny thing. The twos, right? The two of pentacles does talk about um, you know, weighing the pros and cons, multitasking, options, right? And then the, the lover's card. The lover's card, again, is a uh, Gemini, love, friendship, partnership, duality, divine and earthy love. But this two of pentacles and the lover's card, I do believe, is about his kids. So um, what was he wanting to decide? I Give me a second. So he's an Aries, fifth does one, two, three, four, five, six. No, five is Leo. So five is Leo. And if he's a cancer, one, two, three, four, five. Fifth house talks about speculation. So I'm going to say that Terry wasn't too... Oh, my God, Bunny, that was scary. Um, Terry wasn't too sure, couldn't quite make up his mind as far as his kids were concerned. I think Terry had a vague idea that one of them was slightly off, but he didn't know how to fix it. He tried his best to hold them both, like, y'all are both my kids, but there was something off, and some decision had to be made with regards to one of them or both of them or either of them. I don't know. Six of Wands, no more celebrating, right? Ten of Pentacles in the reverse. He feels like there was nothing he could do in terms of saying... I did well as a father. He takes a lot of blame on himself. Uh, like, takes a lot of blame. It's very unfortunate. He blames himself for the destruction of or disintegration of his kids. And then we have the page of swords in reverse. All that gossip and all that is like, all gone. It's like, you know, the fool card. Finally, he is free. I'm going to say... Uh, he's on his merry way, you know, spiritually. I'm going to say for Terry, I, I think he tried. He couldn't make up his mind. He knew something was off. He tried. He didn't understand how to figure it out. He didn't know. when he. By the time he found out it was too late, I do believe Ricky Chavez did something for sure to influence the kids or directly. And the success, the victory of being able to say, okay, now I figured out what I need to do for my kids to, to bring them back home, if you will. Like bring them back to my, to my, you know, my love, my heart, my embrace or whatever was taken away from him. And so therefore, the ability to provide, like be there to provide the Ten of Pentacles, having it all, the security, finances, emotions, whatever, all kinds of securities for me and my family. He is a hardworking kid, hardworking man. And all this prying eyes, he's like, it's all, no, nobody gives a flip. It's all gone. There is sad, sadness in him because he's, it's like saying, where did I fe fail? How did I go wrong? I thought I was doing the right thing. And so he is, I'm going to say, as much as it has taken out of him, taken a toll, I'm going to say, with that fool card popping up in the end, in the upright, I do believe he's, his, his, if you all, if any of you all believe in it, I'm sure a lot of people think it's bah humbug, but I believe in it. I do believe there is some spiritual peace at the end of it all, because he realizes that whatever transpired, right, 
based on the available tools that he had or skill sets or resources, he tried to do the best he could. That's all I'm gonna say. So I'm gonna stop this reading at that. I hope you all enjoyed it. Please do leave your comments. You all know I do appreciate that. I will respond, right? And I will also, um, you know, um, I do read your comments. If I, if I respond for a few and I don't for the others, it's not because I'm ignoring you all. It's because I got sidetracked. I had to jump on and do something else. And then eventually I get to all of them. So thank you so much. I appreciate all of you all. And uh, I hope you subscribe. And uh, yeah, thank you for watching uh, Thriller Thursday. Um, see you in the next video. Bye for now.